I am delighted to be joined by Mark Morton of Lamb of God. Self-titled record is out now. Uh, Mark, I wanted to take up something with you that um, has been a curious thing that I've noticed. When you release a record and you get your feedback for it, and the song that maybe you didn't expect pops out with people going, wow, I love that song. I have been so in love with the cult of resurrection, man. I cannot tell you. It's been wild, hasn't it? That's the that's the one, man. That's the one, like, uh, you know, everybody's jumping on, which I, I've always loved that track. It, it holds a unique place on the album, and it's it's a cool song that we wrote really kind of on the spot. We sort of, like, uh, wrote that with intent. We knew the album, the track list was missing that kind of, like, real dirgy slower kind of just super brutal like kind of hypnotic thing going on and we wrote that to to, to occupy that space um and it, it just wound up it came out really unique and cool it has a lot of personality and i love that people are responding to it um because i i was i was a bit surprised the i've got to say man when i listen to the record like i'm missing live music all of the time but when that first wake up drops in Momento Mori, I'm I'm dying to be in front of an audience again. So yeah. it's got to be it's got to be even worse for the bloke who was involved in writing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we're all uh, we're all dying to get back out there again. That's for sure. And it's it's I have definitely been guilty uh, of sitting around daydreaming about you know set lists for when we can play shows and how certain songs are going to hit and, and the way we're going to, you know, line them up and, and knock them down type thing. Um, and it's cool to think about that stuff. Uh, but I, I'll be thrilled when we can get out there and do it again, man, and play some of these new songs that we're so proud of. Like, dare I say it, um, it feels a little like you guys were a bit more dialed in this time than maybe the last couple of efforts. Is that a scandalous thing to say? I, I no, I mean, I think we were dialed in. I, I don't like to compare too much. We were in different places. You know, if, if I think about where we were uh, when we recorded Storm and Drang, there was just a lot of turmoil, a, a, a whole lot of uh, just a, a whole lot of challenges going on in the band personally as an organization. Um, there was just a lot going on. And I think that album reflects that. I think I, I can I can speak on where we find ourselves now with this new self-titled album, which is in, in a place of confidence. Uh, we the interpersonal relationships in the band are as good or better than they've ever been. Individually, we're all in really good places, and we were really it, it had been a while since we we put out new material, so we were super excited about the ideas that we had collected over that time and working them out into something special. Obviously, you know, art it's his first recording with us and to uh to go through that process with him and you know see his eyes and ears so open and him so willing to learn and and so mindful of the moment that he was in uh it just added a whole um really thrilling energy to the, to the entire process start to finish and i i really think you know these albums uh they're they're refined and they're recorded and they're edited and all this stuff but at the, at the at the bottom of it, it it's uh it's it's still there's a human element to these things so the the vibe of the people making them goes into the music and i think that mm. there's there's that kind of a pulse in there the the interpersonal stuff is interesting because i had art on the show a couple of weeks ago right oh look and, at you well I, <laughs> <laughs> well I really vibed with him because this is no act mark like i fucking love this music i love it and he has got that in the whites of his eyes and he fucking loves your band that he's now in was did it add to the vibe in the studio because he's a lot of bpm much like myself so having someone that excited and that fired up to be playing on a lamb of god record must have added a certain something for you veterans of lamb of god it did i mean we fortunately art had been playing uh with us for a, at least a year and a half um before we actually recorded anything for the album so we, we you know he was he was very much in the band and and we had our our whole groove kind of going on with him as our drummer. But uh, he did, 
certainly bring this excitement that we're referencing. And, you know, it's, it's worth noting officially that he is at least 15 years younger than the rest of us. Um, so, so that kind of comes with it's, you know, it, with, with its own thing as well. But the, uh, the, the, one of the really cool things about art is that as you, as you noted, he's, he's been a fan of the band for a long, long time. Um, and he grew up listening to our music. So he has the ability to sort of process a song idea or a part as a fan. He can detach himself from being the drummer of Lamb of God and listen to it as this is my favorite band's new album. And we don't really have that ability to do because we've been here for the whole ride. So that's a really cool reference point for us to have amongst us as to, you know, what art can give us that feedback on what a fan would want. And it's, it's, it's a curious place because the band has never made a creative decision um, ever based on what we thought a fan might want, the label might want, the critics might want, um, the, the reviews or the journalists might want. It's always been an inside job. You know, it's always been what do we want to play? When do we want to play it? But it's still cool as we're making decisions and sort of getting a vibe for things for art to bring up like this, this has that kind of palaces kind of feel like, and we could kind of like, Oh yeah, I guess it does sort of vibe into that and use these reference points that for us might be blind spots, but for him, um, as a fan, he, he can, he can kind of see that with a little more clarity. It's, you know, a little more, he's not as close maybe in the same way that we are to that old stuff. So to, to roll on with the interpersonal stuff, um, Randy did the did the photos for the art for this, yeah. mm -hmm. and so like I, I've known Randy since um, I think it was just as Ashes of the Weight came out. I did my first interview with him back in England, and one of the most excited I've ever seen him was when he first start when he first picked up a camera. He got sober and got into photography at the same time. And you met him and he was like a force of nature in those moments. And it really shines through like the passion in his photography. Yeah. Was it important? Was it was it cool to add that element to this? Like it feels like a more la like when the when the record is self-titled when you're going to such depths as like even randy is doing the photos for the artwork it gives it more credence i think yeah i think so too i personally think it's kind of a testimony too to where we are in that relationship as a band because i don't mind telling you there there, there would have been times along the way when randy may not have wanted to contribute that to this band or, or maybe the band wouldn't have wanted him to you know, because we, we get in these over the course of the career, you get in these times where things are a little tense or a little competitive or, um, you know, you build up these resentments and that kind of thing. Um, and you become protective of what's, you know, of what you have outside of this band. Um, and I think right now we find ourselves in this place of like real genuine brotherhood and collaboration. And uh, yeah, I love that he, that he, took those pictures and that he put that much of his own, you know, beyond his brilliant lyricism on this album. And it's, this album has some of my favorite Randy Bly lyrics. Um, but he put that visual element of himself. He's such a phenomenal photographer. Uh, why would we not want to include his work? You know, he's, it's so good. Um, it's cool, man. It's all, it's just all cool to, to have that many layers of, uh, of what we're doing come, come through on this album. I think it really, re again, like you noted, it goes back to the self-titled thing. This really represents who and where we are right now. And uh, it's very genuine. And like uh, the other thing is, fun is not usually the word that comes to mind with Lamb of God, but I find this record really fucking fun. While we've got moments like Resurrection Man that is sludgy and dirty and grimy and hard when i hear things like the chorus of gears and randy is really leaning into his punk side as well like it's those moments where it's like wow this this feels like a band having fun at this point it really was a lot of fun and i think you know again the the vibe in the sessions we were actually all in the studio together which you know might um i you know that's that's kind of new for us again we would we got into this 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 sort of routine in the past where we would just kind of you know willie and i would go in and do get the guitars and then you know things were done all kind of done separately and uh, this time around everybody was there for everything you know we weren't breathing down each other's necks while we were getting takes but we were all around and we were all really excited and kind of rallying around you know we got to see this album come together from just little demos that willie and i had started on our computers 
to all the way up to being at Dave Grohl's place, recording the actual drums and recording guitars through the Sound City board. And, you know, we, we were all around for that. And we were all kind of rallying around how this thing was blooming into what it is. And it was such a, man, I, I'm, I love what I do, man. I really do. <laughs> is that that Dave uh, yeah. uh, board that you recorded into? Yeah, it's like, yeah, never mind. The first Rage Against the Machine, <laughs> uh, Tom Petty, Damn the Torpedoes, like, you, you yeah, know, man. On, and, on and on and on. Fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <Cool. laughs> so that I got to go to the quarantine sessions as well. Like, I didn't know, I didn't know this was happening, and then suddenly my timeline blew up like the car in The Godfather. Uh, it felt like again just an extension of having a blast. How was that? Was it? Was it? I mean, conceptually, it's fucking weird, no matter how you slice it up. But how was it to be part of? It's super, it's, it's a little weird just cause it's new, but I think, you know, we, uh, we certainly aren't the first pe people to do that, but, uh, I think it's just, uh, it's, it's cool to be able to find new ways to create engagement with fans. You know, we can't tour right now. We can't, uh, we can't play in front of people. Um, and I can't wait until we can do that again, but until we can, I think we're going to, you know, try and just stay proactive about, uh, creating new ways or, or, you know, engaging in new ways, at least for us, that fans can check out what we're doing and, and get a, a Lamb of God experience, even if it's something different. And, you know, I, I think that there will be things that come out of this that stick. I mean, if, if you know, we assuming we are able to put on shows again, um, and I think we will be at some point, there, there will still be, I think people will have come up with so many new ways to create online content and create a new type of experience and, and some of those things will be cool enough where, where they last i hope so I, mm. I i really feel like this is the kind of element where opportunities are made and where creative people um you know sort of rise above and this is what what separates uh the genuine sort of creative thinkers to the people that are just kind of plugged into the normal channels running through the running through the paces mm. we're, we're, we're trying to be um we're trying to engage as much as we can, given the limitations and, and find new ways to do that. So I've asked you a whole bunch of like outer stuff about everyone else and Lamb of God as a collective. You made a solo record and an acoustic EP and this Lamb of God record. Um, I think there's only really bloodshot eyes where I see one bl one kind of inside the other. Um, how How much did it? take because i've said this to i spoke to nurgle when the last behemoth record came out and he did something like me and that man mm -hmm. and he said it did alter his dynamic of how he wrote for behemoth did you have any of that with lamb of god coming off the solo record because the solo i mean the solo record had like a hundred percent mark morton personality in it and so does lamb of god but i just wondered um i i, I think it i think it gave me a, a bit of clarity i think that um there were times when in the past when I might have been trying to channel something that was a little more conventional, a little more rock and trying to figure out how I can get that into Lamb of God and have it make sense. And I think having the uh, having the outlet of the solo record um, to sort of channel all that stuff, too, I was able to really sort of keep a pure kind of metal focus on the lamb stuff. I don't know if that makes sense, but for me, it just, yeah. it, it, it made, it made me feel a little, a little less um, cloudy in terms of like, can, what can I get away with in lamb? I think that sort of thing was taken away and, and it just made it a, a little bit more of a direct connection for me. Um, I, I, it's been such an opportunity to have the solo option. I've always written rock songs. I've always written blues influenced stuff. I've just never really had a place to put it. And I think I found myself maybe sometimes trying to force it, even even not even so much in, in songs that actually came out in Lamb, but in, in ways I was trying to find um, a, a destination for that stuff. And and I found that destination and it mm. was you know in my solo projects. And there's, there's presumably there's going to be more as well, because when we've spoken, like you showed me your your uh, vinyl and it was all more rock orientated stuff. When we spoke about the Neve board, you're like Tom Petty, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like, is like, is there is that going to be your regular creative output for you? I mean, I, I hope so. L Lamb of God is, is my home, is my priority. Um, it's it's all my loyalties are there. But I have had a, such a great experience making the anesthetic and the ether projects. And they've been, I mean, honestly, really well received beyond anything I could have ever imagined. So 
Um, I hope to do that some more. I, you know, I've got a few things laying around I'm working on with that in mind. I, I certainly don't have any, uh, you know, anything on the calendar or, or like that. But yeah, I hope I hope I get the chance to do it some more for sure. All right, Mark, thank you so much for your time today, man. We'll, we'll leave it there. And I cannot wait for this fucking record to get on the road. Oh, I can't either, man. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate your question.